Hey, what's going on YouTube? And welcome back to all my cloud scholars out there. Uh, today we are gonna continue with our Azure Application Gateway uh, series. Um, what we wanna do, I wanna do in this video is just kind of round everything off. Um, and I wanna talk about security best practices with our application gateways. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about you know uh, HTTPS, enabling HTTPS for your application gateways. Um, I'm gonna walk you, talk you through that one. Um, also restrict backend access. I want to show you exactly how you can set that up for your rules, for your NSG, for the backend, for your uh, servers. And then also talk a little bit about logging, how you would go about logging and, and capturing those logs for your application gateways, right? So um, this is going to wrap up the series for our application gateways. There's uh, definitely some more stuff to talk about with application gateways. But if you have any questions or inquiries, uh, please uh, send an email to cloudscholarslearning at gmail.com or even post something in the uh, comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Or if you're looking for some type of consultation work, I do do consulting. So please, uh, I, I'm open to uh, new customers as always. Um, it's always nice to get a new customer. So um, let's get started with the video. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're over at the Azure portal and we're gonna click on this, uh, our application gateway. And then once you get to your application gateway, we're gonna go to SSL settings. And it, right here is where you would add an SSL profile. And then this is where you would upload your certificate. Now I don't have a certificate, but I did wanna walk you guys through and talk you through it. But unfortunately I do not have a certificate for this because obviously this is for a lab. So that's the reason why, but that's what you would do for, you know, uh, making sure that you're, um, you, you certify for your uh, application gateway to provide some type of um, security in that section. Um, the next thing we want to talk about is um, a restrict backend access. Okay, so we're going to look at restricting access for our application gateway. You got to remember, right? Our application gateway um, takes in our traffic and then we have backend pools. These backend pools have VMs and these VMs are all associated with a network security group or at least they should be associated with your network security group. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that when we send information to our backend pools, that our backend pools, those VMs, the network security group associated with them only allows traffic from our application gateway. So one of the things we wanna do first is I'm gonna come up here to virtual machine and I wanna see exactly which um, area our virtual machines are located, right? What network they're located in. So if I come over here and I look at our virtual machines, I can should be able to see where the network is. So if I come over here to network settings, it just took a little while, but I can get it from here. Um, right here, virtual network subnet. So I know it's in the subnet, uh, RG East US and that default subnet right there. So if I click over here, I'm in my virtual network RG East US and I click on subnets. Right here, I can see the default is the one um, is associated with it. Then I could get my security group. If I look at my security group, this is the security group for our um, virtual machines and it's allowing any HTTP inbound request. So if I go back and, and come up here and I hit refresh, I'm able to see everything. If I go to image, I can get to both of them, right? But I, I should not be able to get to it that way um, because it's allowing all types of HTTP re requests. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna delete this. Okay, so now that we were able to delete that, right, what we wanna do is we wanna create an inbound rule, right? And this inbound rule is gonna deny everything, right? So that's really what we wanna go ahead and do. We wanna make sure that we're only allowing uh, access from our application gateway. Now, so what we're gonna do here is any, uh, any IP address we're gonna have here, and what we're gonna do is any source, any destination, and what we're gonna do here is custom, uh, HTTP because that's what we're using and we're going to actually deny it. So we're denying any HTTP inbound, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to give it a priority of 200 and we're going to deny everything. So this says this rule denies traffic from Azure load balance and may affect virtual machine connectivity, which is fine. So we're going to click add. 
and we're denying any HTTP inbound requests. So now if I come up here and I click on refresh, we are starting to time out because we put a deny rule there because we want to be very explicit about what we are allowing. So we're going to deny everything. And then what I'm going to do is show you how you allow certain things. All right. So just to recap, you know, remember our application gateway is going to have a front end IP address. That's what we're going to use for our back end, like I talked about before. And then we have these, this web application firewall as well over here. But what I'm not showing you is a network security group. So let's look at this whole back end it would be a network security group. And we're going to say we're only allowing access, right? We have our rule, but we have a rule here to allow access only from the application gateways uh, uh, subnet. So as you can see, we timed out here with our uh, gateway. It says timeout Microsoft Azure application gateway version two it has timed out. So what I want to do is I need to find out what network our, our application gateway is associated with. So if I go to networks and I go to subnets over here, where I go to application gateway, I can see this address. This is the address that I want this 10 0 1 0 1 0 slash 24. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on add and I'm going to add that network. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, why are you adding the internal network versus the public IP address? So when you're setting this up, your public IP address for the application gateway is for external users. This is how people get to it, right? And you're going to associate it with a custom DNS name, right? So whatever website name, so it could be mywebsite.com, right? But the back end has the IP address that, you know, users don't know about, but you wouldn't want to associate it with the public IP address in that rule because that opens you up, right? You want to do the internal address for that application gateway subnet. So the application gateway communicates with the back end resources via its private IP address, not the public IP address. Back end resources are typically located in the same virtual network or paired network. So let's say you did a, vir a virtual pair network, you then you would associate it that way. And the application routes traffic from its private IP within its subnet. All right, so now that you understand that what we're going to do is we're going to add a security rule here. So this is going to be allow and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make sure it's HTTP add in destination, I'm going to say any add in source range, what I'm going to do here is click IP address, right? Um, and then what I'm going to do here is I am going to put down, this is a source IP address, source port range. We'll leave that empty or an asterisk there, any destination HTTP. And what we need to do is make sure that this rule is higher than the one that we had before. So I'm going to say 100 for this rule. And it says allow Cedar block HTTP inbound. And I'm going to click add. Now we have a deny rule, right? Which is a 200 priority and is blocking everything. But then we also have an allow rule to allow access from our uh, application gateway. So now when I come up here and I click on refresh, I am now able to get it, but I'm, I'm, I'm making sure my traffic is only coming from the application gateway or anything else. So this is one of the ways you want to go about uh, making sure that your uh, backend pool is only getting access from that specific IP range, which is your application gateway, and your application gateway receives the information and sends it to the back. Okay, so previous video, we talked about enabling web application firewalls. Uh, this video, we talked a little bit about enable HTTPS, and then we was walk through how you would restrict backend access through your network security groups. And then now let's talk about how you would send logs within your application gateway to a uh, Azure Log Analytics Workspace storage account or event hub. So back over our application gateway, uh, this one will be very simple. We're going to come over here and we're going to go down here to our diagnostic settings. And in our diagnostic settings, we'd click add diagnostic setting and we would call it whatever we want. Um, logs, AP, gateway, whatever we want to call it. And we would say a category. We could do all logs if you want to do all logs. Or if you have different teams that have responsibilities, you can say you can get the performance logs and team B would get something else, right? So I can just do a performance logs and then all metrics or whatever. So I'll just do all logs just to keep it simple. And then here you would say, okay, send to log analytics workspace, or you would send send to or archive to a storage account. If you had a storage account, 
or you can stream to an event hub if you are using some type of a, a sim tool like a splunk or something like that you would do it here or i mean with splunk you can get it from storage accounts as well um, from splunk but um, this is how you would go about doing it, right? So you would do a uh, log analytics workspace. Oh, I have a log analytics workspace I can send it to. Um, and over here, I have no storage account, so that's why it's not showing up. But you would create a storage account and you would send it there. Now, I don't want to go too deep when it comes to sending logs and things of that nature. I do have a video talking about how to log in Azure. Um, that video would help you out in terms of understanding the three areas where you can send information to. But that is pretty much it for this series. That's a wrap. I want to thank you all for watching all the videos for our application gateways. Um, I hope that the information that you provide that I provided to you was beneficial. Once again, my name is Kieran Tross, and I want to thank you for watching. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you, and see you next time.